All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Amy Schultz, who is on the other coast in Florida. How are you doing, Amy? I'm great. How are you, John? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And uh, and Amy is from a company called Lead Scene, and she is president, uh, sales and marketing ads genius. It's nice. I I love getting to talk to geniuses because uh, <laughs> the only other time I do is when I talk to myself. And, you know, <laughs> that was a that was a joke. Um, I love that. And today, yes. And uh, today, what we're going to talk about is. Is here's here's one of the challenges that a lot of uh, companies face. You know, they they hire marketing people or they hire marketing agencies or whatever to do their marketing because they feel like I need a marketing person to be able to talk, create marketing speak. Like I don't know how to write marketing. You often hear that I don't know how to write marketing content. Um, but you have a different approach where it's not so much. It's not that you know how to write marketing content or marketing speak. It's how do you talk in a language that's relevant to a business owner. Absolutely. The one thing that I have um, noticed in my my careers, and I started out as a commercial business banker, so my background is actually finance. And while in that position, I was the the trusted advisor, if you will, to all of the business owners that were in my portfolio. They would always come to me for help with, you know, insurance, um, you know, marketing, another way to, you know, buy a fleet of vehicles, you know, things like that. And I quickly realized that the biggest need that they had was on the marketing piece because they didn't understand this new digital world that has evolved for all of us um, that that is actually more than just a website, okay? So from what I understand from how business owners think, everything needs to tie back or make sense to how it's going to tie back to their revenue, right? Because the goal is for them to grow revenues, not lose money. So you have to speak their language, which means actually breaking down our marketing speak to a language that they understand. So that's what I teach other marketing folks to help them close more business. Pretty much, you know, 90% of the deals that that we get opportunities to look at, we close because we speak a business owner's language. So that's the positioning how we take. Yeah, no, and that, that's yeah. that's great because I think a lot of times is I mean, let's face it. I mean, we're bombarded today. I mean, everywhere you you can't you can't move without being targeted for e by emails, by ads on your social media, everything. I mean, people are constantly coming at you, and and therefore I feel like we've got so much noise that we're we block out most of it. So to your point. The only way you're going to get through it, the only way people get through to me is when I spot something that resonates that's relevant to our business. Well, and here's here's the differentiator. I'll just be completely honest and blatant with this. Typical marketers, whether in the large agencies or an individual sole proprietor marketer that sits behind a, a screen and a keyboard, you try to have services that you're trying to position for the close for a business owner. But what you don't realize is that you're actually missing the point of why you are recommending certain things. Not any, everybody is going to need ads on LinkedIn. Not everybody is going to need Google ads. You, um, How I teach other marketers on how to do a little bit of research to literally, no, number one, help the business owner understand their positioning from a digital landscape perspective. Where are they showing up? What are they doing now? Because most of them don't know. They have no clue. So immediately, boom, trust factor. You just gain their trust. Then number two is you actually show them competitor encroachment. You show them what their main competition is doing. And two, uh, 0.2.5 is you actually show them competitors that they didn't realize they, they had from a digital perspective. When you do that and you show them what the landscape looks like from a digital perspective, the aha moments just keep ringing and you now have gained, you know, 75% of their trust because you're showing them things that as a business owner, they should know about. Um, my apologies there. Uh, so that is the biggest thing that the aha moments that we get, because already when I show them this, I've already known that they're 
they're going to become a client of ours because we just showed them so much more intel from a business owner. And I always say from business owner to business owner perspective, these are the things I would want to know about my business. So I'm going to show them to you and you need to understand them and, and not necessarily focus on them. But here's a reason why I'm showing this to you, because we're now going to be able to equate my research to where you want to go. So those are the biggest things that typical marketers out there, they miss. They completely miss that. They try to just pitch their, I, you need a new website. You need a you know, new this, new that. We're going to do this. They don't give them the why. Why do they need this? What does the landscape look like? Where is the easiest point of entry for this client or this new customer to go and maybe potentially run ads? Um, is it a blue ocean? Is it a red ocean? So these are things that I help typical marketers sort of change their thinking and I have a literally a flow that we go through from a research perspective that when you show a business owner these things, you're going to, you know, get them wrapped around your little finger and they are now going to trust you, which means they are now ready to pay you. Yeah, no, they, I, I agree, because one of the things that uh, I, I think and this is a fault of market, isn't it? Uh, I think a lot of the times is that. They just overwhelm uh, people with, you know, every new shiny toy. It's like, oh, you need to be on TikTok. Are you on TikTok? Okay. Uh, you know, you need to be on this. <laughs> or, or, you know, or they say, you know, typical things like, well, I need to fix your SEO and then I need to do this and then I need to do that. And just overwhelming with jargon and you make the other person feel stupid, right? To be perfectly honest. And, and then you're asking them to trust you, as you said, that these are the things to do. And without that proper research and without that proper dialogue, you're likely going to do things that have no value to that company and therefore your trust is shot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I have not found another marketer that does what I do, taking my knowledge from my commercial banking days, knowing what that business owner wants to see, and then marrying it with marketing research and then marketing solutions. Based on that, I have not found another marketer that closes business like I do and I teach. So um, let me also just uh, put out there that the, the number one thing that most business owners think is they need a new website. OK, yeah. that the last thing you want to do is just be an order taker going, yeah, I can do a new website for 15 grand and whatever mm -hmm. the case is. And we'll do this because that's a one time shot. You haven't shown them anything that you can do for them that's actually going to gain their revenues and grow their revenues. If you can tie back what you're doing to a return on investment for what they invested with you, you will be the king or queen uh, marketer for life for this business. So. Um, you know, we as marketers, we own businesses too, right? And what, how do we look at things that are actually going to be something advantageous for us to do? You have to take that positioning and position it that way with any other type of a business owner or leader. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, where marketers haven't done themselves favors, uh, over the years, uh, is that whole thing of, uh, of, of not, of always going well, I, I could give you an ROI model, but there's so many variables into play and all of this. And it also depends what your salespeople do and all of this. And yeah, they, absolutely. You know, we will try to kind of insulate yourself from any kind of accountability in some mm -hmm. ways. You're absolutely right. Um, and, and, you know, because of, you know, CRMs and, you know, auto responders, auto follow up are so big in today's marketing mm -hmm. um, market mm -hmm. that when you can uncover a business owner's process, sales process within the company and where those bottlenecks are, majority of us as business owners have access to a tool that can solve issues for them. So not only are you becoming an agency that can potentially provide services, you now have a potential SaaS client that you have will have because you now have software that they will be locked into because you just solved their bottleneck problem of why their sales team isn't closing the amount of business that they should or why their sales team isn't following up on sales opportunities as often as they should. Yeah, because I mean, one of the one of the greatest things that you can do is obviously uh, is help a prospect or business owner see something that they didn't see before. I mean, that's huge if you can help them see something that they didn't see before and then 
provide them with a solution to either an existing problem or, as I said, a problem that they didn't really understand the, the ramifications of. So it means, I think, in, in, in today's world, uh, I mean, marketers, I always say this, that marketers need to have a better understanding of sales, right? They really do need to have a better understanding of sales and salespeople need to have a better understanding of marketing. Uh, the days of like just throwing up this wall and saying like, we do this over here in marketing and when it's ready, look out, it's coming over the wall and you run with it from there. <laughs> Absolutely. Sales is a scary, is a scary thing. And prior to me, even though I was a commercial banker, guess what I had to do is sell. I had to cold prospect. Everything was growing my portfolio. It wasn't about all, how many deals of lending I can do, how many deposits I can get in the bank. It was how many new relationships can I create? So I came from that and it's a scary scenario, which is why the way that I teach how to close business takes the 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 fear factor away because you're literally following um, an outline of what you need to present to these folks and why you're presenting to them. And when you explain that in your presentation, you will literally close that business on that call. Now, I only run two sales call sales. Uh, the first one is to get to know the prospect. The second is to show them the research and then to talk about pricing associated based on the research that we found. Because what we only do is we position things based on the data. You can't position something that doesn't make sense. And if it doesn't, even if the business owner goes, yeah, I need a new website, within six months, they're going to leave you because you didn't return any investment. You have nothing from a growth perspective that you can show them sometimes. Um, so you need to um, position yourself of something that actually makes sense to them and their business specifically. Not just a, in this niche, well, generally, this is what happens in this niche. If you show them specifically their digital visibility and their, um, uh, uh, excuse me, competitor encroachment, their visibility and truly what they're doing and spending money on, because we as marketers know that we can always find what the other ones are doing. And when you show them that, you close their business. Yeah, no, that, I think that's a that's an excellent point. And one of the other things I was listening to uh, one of the talks that you gave, and one of the things that I, I it kind of stood out for me was again going back to this idea about a lot of people think marketing is pretty pictures and you know pretty websites, but you were talking about like when you often when you present it's with the a, a white slide with just some data on it, and that kind of goes. I mean, that's almost counterintuitive to everything we're it told is. nowadays, isn't it? It is absolutely. And that's the, one of the first things that I say to the business owner when I'm about to present my findings. Um, I'll say, you know, as marketers, what you're probably used to is a fancy dancy PowerPoint slide presentation that has all colors and my logo and everything is going to be really pretty. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be the ugliest presentation. And, I, <laughs> and there's a reason because I want you to focus literally on the data that I'm about to share. And when you say that, Immediately, they're going, OK, well, she hasn't created anything, you know, digitally, um, uh, you know, eye appealing. OK, I'm going to focus on data. She's going to show me things that actually mean something to me. That's 100 percent. And, you know, even my students, that I teach things to no matter how many times I say that, John, there's still students that will put it into a PowerPoint with creating all these colors, all of these, you know, these Pantones, you know, washing from blue to light blue. And I'm like, you have to get rid of that. Honest to God, put it on a white screen in the back, put the data on front and literally use red as um, a, a font color and blue as a font color. And those will strike them. You have to get very elementary with them because they don't understand marketing. That's the reason they're talking to you. So the more elementary you make it, the more you tell them, there's a reason why this is incredibly ugly. I want you to focus literally on the things I'm about to share because you as a business owner are going to want to know this. As soon as you say that, all of your fear that, oh my gosh, I'm not presenting anything beautiful from a marketing perspective, it goes away. They don't worry about that. They worry about what are you going to show them? What are you going to show them on, to do? What is the plan you're going to show them to actually get to the goal that they shared with you on your first call? Yeah, no, it's great because, uh, I mean, I, I feel a lot of the times today, uh, marketers are just trying to be too clever and... And I think like clever is fine and being creative is fine and all of that. But 
I always, I always try to, when we're doing marketing, I always try to look at myself and look at, I look at the, e what emails do I open? What things attract me and everything? And to your point, um, when somebody writes something like super clever and all that, generally doesn't really hit land when somebody writes something very simple that's to the point and that it has yeah. something in it that's relevant to me and to my business and to whatever issues i have at the time you know then then i may pay attention to it but cleverness pretty pictures none of that uh, i may say hmm, that was funny and then move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I 100% I agree with you. So hopefully I made sense with um, yeah. for whomever's yeah. listening to this that, you know, potentially change how you um, present to your prospects. Uh, if you do, the, especially the two things that I shared on the beginning of this talk, yeah. um, first of all, research your prospects digital visibility and show that to them. And then number two, research their competitors' visibility, not only the ones that they believe are their competition, but the ones that actually are putting money behind, uh, you know, showing up and being incredibly visible. When you show them what they're doing and what they're spending money on, the anxiety starts raising, immediately your trust factor raised, and you're gonna have a much easier time closing that business. Yeah, no, I, 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 totally, I totally agree with that. And I think, uh, this is going to become more and more important because I think that, you know, we've seen crisis after crisis, right? Uh, I mean, I always measure it in, I came to the US in the mid 90s. I came during the dot com. So I came to Silicon Valley. So I had the dot com explosion followed by the implosion, followed by 9 11, followed by the financial crisis, <laughs> followed by COVID, and followed by who knows what, who knows what's coming. I mean, I guess there's, there's the war in Ukraine and who knows where that yeah. goes. But to my, to the point, the point that I'm uh, I'm trying to make is that uh, you have to you have to build trust now, and you have to show, and and instead of not overwhelm people, you have to incrementally bring them through something. Like you have to prove something at the beginning, and stop trying to like paint these beautiful pictures because it could all blow up in the morning. Literally. Yeah, absolutely. you're absolutely right. Um, I'll just share with you that pretty much one out of every two presentations I do, or probably more than that, after you share everything and then wait for them to make a decision without saying a word, that's another problem that marketers have is they think that they have to fill all of this dead air with yep. talking when in actuality you just sit and wait for them to talk when that comes out literally the first thing almost every single time i hear is wow i have talked to a lot of marketers and you are the only one that has literally shown us something of value that shows me why i should be doing what you are proposing that we should be doing so when you position it differently you will stand out above the pack I, and I, I just want to underline that because, and this is not just marketers, it's salespeople too, is this, is this yeah. fear of silence, complete fear of silence. Yeah. Like, oh, if I say something to you and if I ask you a question, I mean, this is where it becomes crazy, right? If I ask you a question and then you, and you, you don't answer immediately, I feel like, oh, I need to clarify my question or fill the space. I've just asked you a question. You need to think about the answer. Why am I not giving you space to do that? Exactly. And that's in, in, in my training for how to close business uh, from a marketing perspective. That's the biggest push that I make. And I also do weekly Zooms with the students who go through my training, too. And I actually have it in about, about an hour. Um, but that's the biggest thing. And I re reiterate every single time that when you get to this screen, literally talk through once again the options that you gave them and then be quiet. Be quiet as long as it's going to take and do not be the first person to speak. And I know that is a sales training tactic, but it, you know what? I, I've been through sales trainings. I've taken bits and pieces of certain things, but I'm not, um, I don't 100% believe in all of the sales training that I've been through just because I try to be incredibly real. And if, um, I guess my point being, that's the one thing that they always said that basically when you position your, you know, proposal, the first person to speak loses <laughs> and that has always stuck with me. So if I'm the first person to speak after I present their options, I'm going to lose the deal. If they're the ones, they're going to lose because they were going to pay me. Um, so they're going to lose a little bit of money on the upfront before we turn their marketing around. But just think of it that way. 
Yeah, and 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 the trouble is, I think today is because of um, you know we're bombarded, as I said, with their, we've got our devices, we've got all of this, is that we've become so used to reacting, and we've become so used to not really listening. And and I think that's the, and to your point, I think that's one of the biggest things, uh, and the biggest takeaways for people today is learn how to listen, like present your present your information the way that Amy said, and then learn how to listen and focus and be present. And whatever you need to do to achieve that, do it. If it means like you need to lock your phone away for the duration of it, well, lock your phone away, do whatever it is to be present and then practice, practice uh, active listening. So if somebody says something, you know, when you ask a question and they answer it, if you actually then go, oh, actually halfway through that, I, I kind of zoned out. Well, then ask a clarifying question so that they can reiterate it. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll just share with you one of the things that I ask the folks that go through my marketing um, sales training is always record your sessions because let's face it, most of us are not doing face-to-face -face sales anymore these days. Yeah. So we're doing yeah. Zoom calls and and always record. And I have to you know, stay on that. And it's uncomfortable watching yourself back or listening to yourself back. But there are times that we'll, in our weekly Zoom rooms, they'll play their recording back for me and I'll stop it and I'll go, did you just hear that? This is where you, there was silence. It was perfect. And then you got nervous and you just started blood, you know, blood, you know, talking again. And um, so, you know, if, if you do nothing else, record every session that you have and make sure you listen to it back and learn where you potentially won the deal or where you lost it because you'll feel it. Yeah, no, that's a great, great piece of advice, Amy. Listen, unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, so all of Amy's information will obviously be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so if you are a digital marketer and you're looking for uh, a, a group of other digital marketers, there we have a free group in Facebook called Client Crush. Uh, the Power Close Secrets for Digital Marketers. I know it's very long, but just look for Client Crush. You will find us. Uh, secondly, if you are a business owner and are looking for potentially working with me and my team, uh, go to leadscene, L-E-A-D-S-E-E-N.com. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, this is great. I would really encourage you to do it because there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of there's some great marketers out there. There's a lot of uh, mediocre and there's a lot of not so good. So, I mean, I would really, really encourage you go check out Lead Scene, check out Amy's uh, and check out Amy's Facebook group. As, as you said, it's a free group. If you're a digital marketer, like go in. The best thing is to learn from your peers. All right. Well, thank you again, Amy. And thank you for watching, listening. And I'll see you all again really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.